Hello everybody, what's up? In this video, I will test if overclocking and undervolting your GPU for it to run faster and cooler for free is worth it. Before I start, I want to say that this is not a tutorial on how to overclock and undervolt your video card. In this video, I will test my own RX480 and see if it's possible to get better frame rates and temperature by overclocking and undervolting it, to see if it's worth the hassle and if you should do it too. Overclocking, as the name states, is putting a higher clock speed than the manufacturer has put originally, or as we call it, stock settings. Clock speed is the measure of how fast a GPU can do instructions but it is only comparable with the same GPU and not with another tier of GPU and another manufacturer for example. Also, clock speed doesn't define the actual speed of the graphics card, that is to say, the FPS it can deliver in a game. Like I said, you can only compare clock speed with the same GPU. For example, my RX 480 stock runs at the clock speed of 1306MHz and this speed is only comparable to other RX 480s. So if another RX 480 is running at 1400 MHz with all the other parameters uh, the same, then this other RX 480 is faster than my RX 480. Meanwhile, a GTX 1060 GB has a clock speed of 1708 compared to the RX 480 1306 MHz. You might think uh, the GTX 1060 is quite a bit faster because it's a 26% increase in clock speed, but it isn't. These have different GPU architectures, which means the GPU executes tasks in different ways, and uh, clock speed are just not the way to compare them performance-wise. What about undervolting? Undervolting is giving your GPU less voltage so it runs cooler and quieter, and by how much it depends on GPU to GPU. GPU requires a specific amount of voltage to be run and be stable, but this amount differs from GPU to GPU just like I said. Some GPUs require more voltage to run and others can run on lower voltages for the same performance, but manufacturers go for a safer voltage that is stable for all the GPUs. Often this voltage value is way higher than what the GPU actually needs. So, with the process of undervolting, you can lower your GPU power consumption and temperatures and maybe even overclock it a bit if you're lucky and you can do this all for free. Is it dangerous to overclock and undervolt your GPU? Most of the time, when people are overclocking their GPU, they put a higher voltage to achieve much more higher clock speed compared to what stock voltage can deliver. But higher voltage in this case also means higher power consumption and temperatures. Putting too much voltage can damage your GPU or even destroy it. If not, the temperature must be controlled. If you overclock and your GPU reaches around 85 degrees Celsius while running, it can lower the lifespan of your graphics card because running electronics at extremely high temperatures is bad for them. So make sure you have sufficient cooling. Do your research before attempting to overclock your GPU, though it isn't that hard and actually killing your GPU is difficult to do so because manufacturers have built a different defense mechanism against it, but you still need to be careful. What about undervolting? Undervolting will not cause any damage to your GPU, but it can lead to instabilities since you're putting a lower voltage than the stock that manufacturers have put. Just like I said, GPU voltage requirements differ from chip to chip, so you must find a sweet spot for your specific GPU. Instability occurs when there isn't enough voltage to power your GPU. It doesn't necessarily mean you can't undervolt, maybe it means you are undervolting too much. But if you're unlucky, maybe the quality of your chip is not the best, so you can't undervolt at all and maintain the same performance. Let's talk about what I have managed to do with my RX 480. I have the Sapphire RX 480 Nitro Plus OC 4GB and by the way, I have revisited this GPU on my last video with 15 games now in 2021, link in the description. Anyways, the stock voltage of my RX 480 is at 1150mV and the clock speed is 1306MHz. After testing it with the 15 games benchmark, I noticed 
that the temperature gets really high, around 80 to 83 degrees Celsius, and it can maintain the 1306 MHz clock speed, its thermal throttling, a defense mechanism where the GPU lowers its clock speed and voltages on its own to not overheat. So I tried lowering the voltage to 1075 volts from 1150, and that's a 6.5% decrease in voltage. Then, I overclocked my GPU from 1306MHz to 1340MHz. This is a very small overclock, only a 2.5% increase. Then, I boosted the clocks of the memory from 1750MHz to 2000MHz. Here is the full specification of the GPU in the driver version in which the games are tested. And here is the complete test system. All of that out of the way, here are the 5 games I have tested to see if you gained some performance. Battlefield 5 average FPS performance increased by 2.5% from 92.60 FPS to 95.07 FPS and the 1% loss also improved a little bit. Since the overclock wasn't that huge, I expected this mild performance uplift and I'm actually pleased we actually had better performance even if only by a small amount. Forza Horizon 4 performance increased its average FPS by barely 2% from 97.53 to 99.33 FPS. The 1% loss remained the same, but then again, we didn't overclock much so this is still a good result. Doom Eternal is the game that benefited the most with the overclock a 5% increase in performance from 122.17 FPS to 128.37. The 1% lows, in the other hand, receive a small bump. This game is beautifully optimized and props to the developers. Cyberpunk, in the other hand, didn't actually benefit with the overclock and the average FPS increase is just so small that I'd call it the same performance. Though, the 1% loss has lowered from 31.93 FPS to 30.10 FPS. Though, I don't mind it since we re receive a better performance on the other games. This game is just so hard to run now with older GPUs. Valhalla results is a bit weird. The average performance increased by 2 FPS, that's a 3.5% increase from 58 to 60 FPS, though the 1% loss has decreased quite a bit, from 46 to 42.33, a 8% decrease in 1% loss. I don't know why the 1% loss has decreased, if you viewers know the reason why, let me know in the comments. Here are the results of all the games I have tested. Taking all the average FPS of the overclock and undervolt and comparing it with the stock settings, it increased by 3%. Meanwhile, the 1% lows remain the same. So is it worth overclocking your GPU? In my case, the answer is yes. Just like I said, it was a small overclock so the increase in performance is reflected by it. What made a larger impact is the undervolting side. As stated before, I lowered the voltage from 1150 millivolts to 1075. Let's see in these two games, Forza Horizon 4 and Fortnite, in real time if the undervolt actually helped with the temperature of the card. Stock settings on the left and overclock plus undervolt on the right. As you can see, there's a difference in temperature right away. The stock settings is running at around 71 degrees, meanwhile the undervolted GPU is running at around 68 degrees. Both are running the same auto fan speed. The power consumption also decreased by 6 to 8 watts. This is an improvement compared to the stock settings. Not only the GPU is running cooler, but the fan speed is also actually lower, so the noise is lower as well. 
With Fortnite, we can see the biggest benefit of undervolting, your GPU. The difference is huge. Not only the undervolted GPU is running cooler at around 77 degrees compared to the 83 degrees Celsius of the stock GPU. It is also capable of maintaining its 1340 MHz overclock clock speed. Meanwhile, the stock settings is struggling and actually term of throttling. Also, like Forza Horizon, the fan speed is also lower. So is the noise. With this game, we can fully see the benefit of undervolting your GPU. After seeing all the results of all the games, we can finally answer the question, is it worth undervolting and overclocking your GPU? Of course, who wouldn't want extra performance, cooler and quieter GPU for free? Though, I must say that your result will vary compared to mine, since all GPUs are not equal. You might have a worse silicon so it undervolts worse or overclocks less, but you can also have a way better chip than mine, capable of overclocking a lot further and lowering the voltage even more. It all depends on your luck. Just make sure you do the proper research and watch a trustworthy tutorial on how to overclock and underclock your GPU, so you're sure that you won't break anything. Though, is it necessary to overclock and undervolt your GPU? Of course not! If you're satisfied with your graphics card as it is right now, then feel free to keep it that way. Just keep in mind that your graphics card might be capable of giving you more performance and run cooler and quieter and all of this for free. But if you have a card like mine that is running toasty and loud, give undervolting and overclocking a try. It's definitely worth the hassle. Thanks for watching the video everybody. Thanks for all the support. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe to not miss upcoming tech videos. Leave a comment because it helps with the algorithm, just if you want to. If you have questions or suggestions or anything, just type it in the comments. I will reply when possible. I appreciate all of you viewers of this channel. Take care and see you next time. Arrivederci e grazie a tutti.